Welcome, neighbors, to Hometown Earth, the podcast that brings a down-to-earth approach to all of your sustainability questions. I'm your host, Lena Sanford, here on the Believe Podcast Network, the number one podcast network for professionals. Here, we believe that everyone can change the world. Do you believe? I'm a Midwest gal with big dreams to discover what it takes to reduce my impact on this beautiful place we call Hometown Earth. Join me every Tuesday as we navigate what actions we can take, big or small, to make a positive impact in your life and the lives of your neighbors on Hometown Earth. What comes to your mind when you think of sustainability? No, really, think about it for a minute. I went to Reddit to pose this question and I got a few answers. Responses like composting, being able to pass on the earth to future generations, the ability to stay alive without running out of resources, and even having access to things like internet. Overall, really good answers. The only thing that struck me was that most of the answers were related to environmental sustainability. And you might already be thinking, Lena, isn't environmental sustainability the only type of sustainability? Well, if you read the title of this episode, you may now realize that there are three distinct pillars of sustainability, environmental, social, and economic, or it's also known as planet, people, and profit and they all have to function together to achieve true sustainability. Now, we've obviously focused on the environmental side of sustainability, as far as environmentally friendly products, composting, reducing our carbon footprint, but we have also intertwined that with topics like fair trade, living a healthy lifestyle, and sustainable business models. The truth is, is that these three pillars usually overlap one another, And it's probably better to think of it as a Venn diagram, where planet, people, and profit each have a circle, and there are parts where they overlap, but also where they all come together in the middle for a true picture of what a completely sustainable society should be. In this episode, we'll outline the three pillars of sustainability, planet, people, and profit, to broaden your understanding of sustainability and its interconnectedness with every aspect of our lives. Sustainability is the ability of a system to endure, but true longevity of life requires sustainability of every system. The U.S. National Environmental Policy Act of 1969 says that the goal of sustainability is to create and maintain conditions under which humans and nature can exist in productive harmony that permit fulfilling the social, economic, and other requirements of present and future generations. In other words, we have to work with nature to have a productive, healthy society. If the capacity of the environment is lowered, Our social system is affected, which means less production that the economic system can generate. So really, it's the environment that holds all other systems together. So let's start there. We've got a head start on what it means to have a sustainable planet. Environmental sustainability focuses on efficient resource use, making sure that we preserve habitats and use land properly, and it maintains quality soil, air, and water. It's living in harmony with our natural resources and the animals who live here with us. We all know that we're kind of failing at this as we can see it reflected in mass deforestation, extinction, unstable weather conditions caused by climate change, and pollution of our air and waterways that's affecting human life. The American lifestyle is especially demanding. It is estimated that if everyone in the world lived the way that Americans do today, it would take five Earths to sustain the planet. It's hard for us to see years as a short period of time, but in the grand scheme of the planet, it is. We are quickly depleting our resources for immediate satisfaction. Coal, it's going to run out. Oil and natural gas, they're going to run out too. Even our clean water access is being diminished. The International Resource Panel estimates that almost half of the world's population might struggle with getting fresh water by 2030. Like, that's in less than 10 years, y'all. So even though 10 years may seem like a long time, it really isn't that much time to get it together. Think about it. Earth's natural resources are the foundation for every single thing in our lives. The furniture you sit on, the car you're driving, 
the food that you eat, the house that you live in, even the clothes that you're wearing. It all required either water, soil, energy, or minerals given to us directly by the planet. By doing your own part to live an environmentally sustainable lifestyle, you're helping to bring that harmony back to the ecosystem to allow for fewer resources to be depleted while contributing to the overall well-being of our society. So let's move on to the second pillar, social sustainability, which is actually kind of the hardest pillar to break down. At its core, social sustainability is about human needs and balancing the needs of individuals with the needs of a group. The Western Australia Council of Social Services says that social sustainability occurs when the formal and informal processes, systems, structures, and relationships actively support the capacity of current and future generations to create healthy and livable communities. Socially sustainable communities are equitable, diverse, connected, and democratic, and they provide a good quality of life. So this means at the individual level, we need fairness, respect, diversity, and basic human rights and resources met. At the community level, we need social cohesion, accessibility, livability, and inclusion. It stands that there should be equal opportunity for education, for standard of living, for good health, and the opportunity for participation in the systems that affect us, and that all of this should be able to be maintained long term. There's a point where social sustainability meets environmental sustainability on the Venn diagram that we talked about, and it is deemed quote-unquote bearable. Like we've mentioned before on this podcast, planetary health and human health are closely related. Around the world, 24% of deaths can be traced back to avoidable environmental factors. As humans, we need and deserve clean air, fresh water, in a life free of toxins and hazardous conditions. So to look at social sustainability is to look at environmental justice, protecting the health of communities who are overburdened by pollution and having transparent, open processes and education for them to engage in and be able to improve their own health. It is having environmental policy and regulations in place to keep the earth and humans safe. It's promoting public policies that support social sustainability and the advancement and design of sustainable communities. Even by listening to this podcast, you are engaging in social sustainability because you are getting the education on sustainable practices and how you can use it to improve your life and the lives of your local and global neighbors on this planet. And when you share that knowledge, you're strengthening social sustainability and empowering others to take action for their own health and the environment as well. The third pillar is economic sustainability. Sustainability in the profit sector is about making sure that businesses can make money and grow without negatively impacting the other two pillars people, and the planet. Economic sustainability is looking at long-term profits and returns, cost savings, true pricing, and risk management. It is the ability of an economy to support a defined level of economic production indefinitely. And when you look at it, if people in the planet are taken care of, there is profit to be made. Most people don't recognize this and don't understand that the longevity of their company is based on whether we take care of the people and the planet. Companies are increasingly figuring out how to adapt sustainable practices, and new companies, they're factoring it into their entire business model. We all know that there are shortcuts to profits, things that can be made with the same cheap and easy products that harm our earth and people, but with a little innovation and time dedicated to sustainable practices, it could affect the business's earnings long term. The point where economic sustainability and social sustainability meet is deemed equitable. This is where fair trade, workers' rights, ethics, and supporting local economies all come into play. In corporations, they have something called the Triple Bottom Line, or TBL, which is an accounting framework that incorporates all three pillars of sustainability into tracking their overall performance. 
It looks at the company's social sustainability, their human rights, fair labor practices, living conditions, health, safety, wellness, diversity, and equity, as well as the environmentally sustainable practices that they're implementing, all while considering their financial profit. Now, the point where economic sustainability and environmental sustainability meet is deemed viable. This makes sure that they are using their resources and energy efficiently, preventing pollution and meeting environmental policy and regulation standards. Companies should be quickly figuring out how to rely on renewable resources instead of our finite natural resources if they want to survive long term. You can help strengthen this pillar by supporting businesses that are environmentally and socially sustainable. You know what's nuts? The number of ingredients in wasteful packaging and milk production. But you know what else is nuts? Joy's almond and cashew nut bases. It's literally nuts, and that's it. It's a perfect milk substitute without the wasteful packaging and unnecessary ingredients. It's nuts that only one tub of Joy can save up to seven milk cartons from a landfill. It's nuts that it can sit on your shelf for up to 18 months. It's nuts that Lena can make queso with this stuff. And to be honest, her food has never been better. But don't tell her I said that. And it's nuts that you can get 10% off of your order by using the code Lena Samford when you visit addjoy.com. Go nuts! Bringing all of these three pillars of sustainability together in the middle, you have a sustainable community, the one that manages its human, natural, and financial capital to meet current needs while making sure that there are enough resources for future generations. Focusing solely on one pillar won't help when the other pillars aren't strong. When one pillar falls, it weakens the others. They're all connected in some way or another. For example, the Great Recession of 2008 showed that when in a financial crisis, strapped for money, environmental laws and budgets are just typically thrown to the wayside, and nonprofits that work to support the environmental pillar see their income drastically decrease, and it causes a further disparity in our social systems. Another example, if there is political unrest or a fight for resources in the social sector, the environment suffers for short-term survival, and there is lower economic output, which leads to negative long-term consequences. You can even look at the COVID-19 pandemic as a really interesting case of the interconnectedness of each pillar. Because of our health, the need for self-preservation from widespread illness, we've harmed the environment with an increase in medical waste, haphazard use and disposal of PPE items like gloves and masks, and had an increase in single-use plastics to try to minimize contamination. We saw the disparities in health outcomes between different social groups and how these groups were impacted different financially. A weakened social climate has had a negative effect on the environment and, as we well know, a weakened economy. Because when people are suffering, unable to work or normally contribute to society, it has an impact on the output into the economy. Because businesses have shut down, people are unable to pay bills and make ends meet, which means they're not out buying and selling. The flip side to this particular pandemic, there has been improved air quality and lower carbon emissions from people staying inside. Less water pollution and noise and reduced pressure on tourist destinations, allowing them to restore themselves naturally. But it's at the cost of our mental health, which also affects how we participate in society, which can shape public policy. So the overall impact on each of these pillars is still yet to be determined. The point is, is that while the environment is often thrown out the window first when it comes to people and profit, the planet is the most influential in affecting those other two pillars. If the planet fails people and profits will ultimately fail. Our survival depends on our natural environment. And I know that sounds pretty doomsday-esque, but hear me out. I think it can be something positive. Once we realize how connected everything is, and hopefully you have by now, we look at the world differently, which allows us to make necessary changes. You are now equipped to make those changes because you know more. So what comes to my mind when I think about sustainability? Well, I think about Portland, Oregon. You may be laughing kind of like I am, but I'm serious. 
When I was talking about sustainable societies, you may have had a doubt, but Portland is hope. They are one of the leading sustainable communities in the U.S. when taking into consideration their energy use, climate change policies, green economy, and green innovations. They are one of the largest cities in the country, and they continue to grow their population and economy sustainably, reducing their CO2 emissions as they grow, all while remaining a compact city, making it accessible for anyone. They have over 92,000 acres of green spaces within the city, including permaculture and urban farms. They make sure that all citizens can easily reach sustainable food options and have access to their needs. And they teach their citizens how to be more sustainable at work and live a greener life at home. Built into their government is a program to help the city save money reduce carbon emissions, and create a healthier, more equitable workplace through advocacy. Over half of the city's power comes from renewable resources, with the goal to use 100% renewable energy throughout every aspect of the city by 2050. Their stormwater systems were designed and managed so that they can collect and reuse the water to make green infrastructure improvements and reduce pollution. And finally, a quarter of their workforce buses or bikes to work. And their buses? They're free and powered by biofuel. Their bikes? Use is incentivized by companies and low-income citizens are even provided free bicycles. They aren't perfect, but they are making strides. And the idea is that if Portland can do it, maybe we can too, one city at a time. So we'll shift gears to our segment, Something to Grow On. I wanted to share a few top documentaries to watch on sustainability so that you can further your growth and connection to issues around the world. Documentaries have the special magic of educating and creating dialogue that may have never occurred otherwise. They help to span the physical divide of our globe through captivating images, bringing the world right into our homes. The first one I'll recommend is Tales by Light. This is a docuseries that addresses the effects Western consumption has on all three pillars of sustainability. This series follows photojournalists across the world as they uncover the story of our planet and show it to us in a new light. From child workers in Bangladesh to brown bears in East Africa, this series will leave you feeling inspired to take action to protect this beautiful planet and the people in it. The second is another docuseries called Our Planet. If you want a show to take your breath away, go ahead and press play. This series takes you to all inspiring places inaccessible by most humans, threading a string through the importance of these ecosystems, how each creature contributes to keeping another alive, and how at risk these systems are because of human presence. You'll be motivated to make a difference when you're done watching this one. And the third is a documentary called There's Something in the Water, narrated by Elliot Page. This film examines all three pillars as well, planet, people, and profit. It's an examination of environmental racism in the community of Nova Scotia, Canada, but it helps to get your gears turning and bring a lot to issues that are happening across many countries, including the United States, like the Flint, Michigan water crisis. You'll be Googling your nearest environmental action group afterwards, trust me. So pick one that entices you to learn more, grab some popcorn, maybe a Kleenex, and a notebook, and get to growing, my friends. Be sure to let me know which documentary you watched and what you thought by heading over to the Hometown Earth Instagram and connecting with me there. I sincerely hope you have a good day, and I cannot wait to see you here next week. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hometown Earth as much as I did. Let us know by rating and subscribing so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every week on Tuesday. Head to the show notes linked in the episode description for more details and let us know in the comments what you want to hear next. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Believe.com and at Believe Podcasts. And you can find more about the podcast on Instagram, at Hometown Earth, or connect with me at Lena Sanford. We all know change needs to happen, so let's get started right here at Hometown Earth.